I was striving for happiness, and I felt like happiness was something that I could strive towards by working and doing certain things, whereas now I'm in a space where I'm just like, I'm just gonna live each moment happy. And those are the happy moments, like happiness isn't something that you work towards, it's something that you just live. Um, and that's, that's the difference in that. So, Nigerian background. You go by Mayoa. Yeah. Your real name. So was music in your life this whole time or did it kind of gradually seep its way in there? So it was actually interesting. I remember this story so vividly. It was um, after church. Me and my friend Lewis, we went back to his house and we were bored. So we just sat down and I think we were using his laptop camera and we made, <laughs> we made a parody song to, uh, what was it? Uh, what's the name of the song? I think it's Chillin' by Wale. Yeah, so we made a remix to it. It was terrible, by the way. Like, thinking back to it, it was bad. But I wrote my lyrics, I wrote his lyrics. We were just bored, nothing to do, and we just made a parody song. And that was the first ever song I ever made in my life. And from there, it just kind of became a thing where it just... I gradually got into this mode of just always creating music. Um, and then my friend Lewis, he, he got into taking pictures and videos a little bit. So then we were doing that like together. So that's kind of how I started. Early on, I saw your mixtape and it has this kid on it. I wasn't going to bring this up, but it has this kid on it with, and the kid's so fly, with a gold chain and <laughs> It looks like he's just ready to go out to the club. Was that you? That was me. That was you? Yeah, that's, me. That's, that's a me. good picture, that's dude. Me. That picture is from back when I was in Nigeria. I don't know how old I was in that picture. I have no clue. But it was one of my baby pictures from, from Nigeria. So it was literally, I just took a picture of the, the, the physical printout, uh, printed out picture and like used it as a mixtape cover. I just thought it was a cool picture of me as a kid. Um, I, I remember when I made that mixtape, I was like living in an apartment in Newark with like a bunch of roommates and I was just, yeah. But after that, your music took a, like a noticeable emotional shift. Yeah. What happened? Um, I feel like everyone, I feel like a lot of people fall into this thing where they, they make the same things over and over again and you lose sort of this relationship with your own music or with your art. Right. Whereas for me personally, I'm creating for originally for the sole purpose of and I'm trying to I always try to stay true to that. Like the sole purpose I'm creating is for this to be a release of like my personal feelings, emotions or or life or things that I see around me. Um, so as that progresses. Right. So I'm just I just make new music. So that's really what happened. So I think um, I'm not sure what project follow that per se but probably at, I think it was at a moment in time where uh, I was probably going through some some like emotional things which is more evident in the lyrics more I would say a lot of my earlier things had uh, songs had lyrics that were on the sadder side also just in general because that's that's really that's my main source of inspiration has always been just this is a, a filter for my the negative emotions that I'm living with so that I have somewhere to pour it into, right? So in terms of inspiration, um, in one of your latest songs, Green Jeep, yeah. you talk about cops. Yeah. And to put it straight up, you say PTSD from the boys in blue. Yeah. I feel like a lot of artists' view on police are similar to the general public's view on police, like a lot of them are messing up and a lot of them can be spoken badly about or poorly about, but artists we have, or not we, but you guys have the opportunity to speak about them in a different light. So do you think that your words or any artist's words can help push that in the right direction? I think it depends, right? Obviously words have power just in general, but for me personally, like I'm speaking, like I said, I'm speaking my experience, my truth. That's why it's like it's not something that I've like I like devoted an entire song to because I can't 
I don't want to tell somebody's ex own experience, right? I'm just putting out, this is how my feeling is based on what I experience and what I, I live, right? As far as artists changing the view, I think one of the things that's, that's interesting, right, the, way, the fact that you brought that up is that I think a lot of artists who might have conflicting views with that aren't going to put it out, especially more mainstream artists. They're not going to put out that view because of the fact that their audience has a conflicting view to that type of situation. So I, I could see that standpoint. Legitimately, I can't think of a really positive experience that I have for myself or from people close to me with the police, so I can't speak on that in that way. My most memorable setback, probably mid-COVID, right, where it was interesting, right? It was a setback, but it wasn't really, right? It was, it was weird where I found myself in like a darker place. It was actually prior to COVID, right? I found myself in one of the darkest spaces that I had been in my life as far as personal and my thoughts go. And it was a weird space I was in because it coincided with like a writer's block situation. So it's an interesting thing where you're what you use as your filter for these negative uh, uh, these negative feelings for so long, you can't use it anymore because you I'm unable to write at this point. So that it becomes even darker, right? And it became even harder. Um, and that's just when like, in those moments though, I feel like in those moments, I just fall back on my faith, right? So I'm a Christian. I believe in God. That's that's what I that's what I fall back in. I mean, in the good and the bad moments. So I think because of that, um, it ended up turning that situation where I was like, you know, I'm gonna rely less on this on the music, and that's why I think my sound is changing a little bit more now too. Is because I started seeing it as less of rest, less of like a, a release or like this thing where you toss your negative uh, feelings into and more of an expression overall because I was just like I'm not I'm gonna not gonna allow myself to be, have this sort of mentality or this, this mindset where I'm just thinking negative thoughts all the time because now I'm just like all right I'm gonna just like God got that he can handle that I'm gonna just live life based on how I'm, I'm supposed to or how I'm led to live and then let that fall into place um, which is why I feel like I think that helped me find myself more, actually. So your darker music, one of those tapes includes insomnia. Yeah. Right? Um, one of the lines that you actually say in your earlier music was, don't sleep on an insomniac. So I had bad like anxiety and panic attacks and stuff like that when I was young. I wouldn't be able to sleep often. It was like a, it was the, the insomnia combo, right? Where you can't fall asleep, uh, where it takes you a long time to fall asleep, and then when you finally do, you're waking up in the middle of the night a few times. Um, and then that, it's like, a, it's like a, it's a bad cycle, right? Because it affects, it's caused by your, your thoughts and your negative f feelings. And then that leads to lack of sleep, and then lack of sleep leads to more of those negative feelings. And it's just like this, overwhelming cycle. So I dealt with that since I was a teenager, um, maybe even earlier than that, like a preteen, up until probably the past couple years or so where I started having a little bit more of a shift mentally. Um, where it's like, like I was saying earlier, where I started f like getting back into like my faith in Christianity a little bit more, where I was just like in a situation where I was like, you know what I mean? This is like, there's enough for me to do in this life than for me to deal with things that are beyond my control, right? Um, where I was just like, it's just like this, this calming situation where, so that Insomnia EP, which I released, what year, has it been a few years now? Um, but from then to now is completely drastically different. But I was writing those songs. One thing that, that to note about all of my projects was most of the music that I wrote was literally in situations where I was like, I can't fall asleep. I'm laying in bed. I can't sleep. I'm just going to get up and make a song. So that's how it was. Um, but 
now I'm shifted out of that, thankfully. Yeah. Congratulations. Good for you. Thanks. <laughs> so these, this is the last quote that I'll point out. One of the first songs that I saw on your SoundCloud, you said, I just want the life of which I wish. I was wondering what life is that and has that changed since then? It has changed, actually. Yeah. Um, I think back then, honestly, I don't think I was speaking of like a life which I wish, um, if I'm remembering my lyrics right, I, I don't think I was speaking of it in like the super like physical sense. I think I was just in a space where I was just like, I just want to be happy. So that was, that's what I, that's what I meant. So technically it hasn't changed. I think my definition of happiness has changed in and of itself. So the goal is still happiness, but I'm happy now, which is why in the new song coming out, like you've heard it, no one else has heard it yet, but a few people have heard it where one of the last words that I rap is me literally saying, I'm happy. It's just that. And it's because it's kind of a juxtaposition from that situation or that time, uh, that time where it's like, I want the life which I wish, where it was just like, I was striving for happiness and I felt like happiness was something that I could strive towards by working and doing certain things. Whereas now I'm in a space where I'm just like, I'm just gonna live each moment happy. And those are the happy moments. Like happiness isn't something that you work towards, it's something that you just live. Um, and that's, that's the difference in that, right? But it's definitely going uh, back on the more positive side of like your attitude. You kind of hit on it before, but is there a goal that you had for this single? Yeah, it was, I think the, what I realized um, making this was a couple things, right? Um, I brought up my faith a few times, right? So one was, that's a recurring theme in this song a little bit. Um, and it was just like, the more I decided to be like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna live my Christian life as much as possible. The more I decided to do that, the more I started pulling out of, I started learning how to fight the demons, right? As a, or like, which is why the hook is like, I got demons in my mind, I need you to teach me how to fight. So it was like, I started learning like how to fight them by not, by not doing anything. You know what I mean? Like everyone has demons, right? Everyone has like shit that they're going through or whatever. But it was just, I started realizing it's like, that's not my fight to fight. Which is why even in the end of the song, it's like the rapping part, like the, the verse is talking about like progressing into happiness um, and like becoming happy but the chorus still comes back saying I got demons I need you to teach me how to fight but really the point of it is like you don't have to fight them yourself you know what I mean like you can just live outside of them um, in a way uh, that's that's how I that's what I found right for myself um, you know I'm happy <laughs>